pulls out. Fat Escalade. Yeah. Unsubscribe now. Why don't you guys race Crown Vicks? Guy with Crown Vicks shows up uninvited to race. <laughs> Loses. <laughs> Leave. That would be better. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you raise your crown big versus the crown big, Jeremy? Yeah, Jeremy. Are you sad that you lost hey, yesterday, too? No, I don't care that I lost. I mean, you sound a little sour. I don't care at all. I mean, well, it's not, it's not your attitude says right different. <laughs> Look at this thing. This thing's all apart. Love you. I'm going to be any Mountain Dew for that. Thanks. I'm going to say it back. Look, love you. All right, so those are definitely in order since this is what we pulled off. Pretty darn. Didn't really feel warped, but you definitely see the hot spots, so. And, as you were saying, we're just at the uh, wear marks. Yes, the minimum size. Well, the pads were just at the wear indicators, and then that's down the minimum size where we don't need to cut it anymore. We just, in the last day or two, started to hear the little chip, 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 chip. Your mileage, you really should flush the fluid. Mm hmm Because the fluid does break down after time. So. Yeah, as long as we've had it, I don't think we've done it at all. I don't think we've done anything with the brakes on this as far as the 60,000 miles or so that we've had it. I don't know. What do you say, guys? Maybe we get another 60,000 miles out of them? We have stuffed an LT4 blower on our 6.2 liter engine that came in this Escalade, and we've optimized it in a whole bunch of different fashion. However, we've always kind of been dancing around some heat issues. And uh, we're looking at trying to optimize that. So guys, we've done a number of things in order to optimize this right here, but now it's time to take it to the next level. We have modified our cold air box. We've modified our intake tube. And that is one of the first things that we need to be able to address. So all along we've had some duct tape sitting here and I've said it before, this thing kind of gets the last of our attention. It's literally my wife's daily driver. It doesn't get a lot of, uh, well, necessary love that it really needs. So we need to be able to build a coupler or kind of redesign the airbox into being able to mate with that and get rid of the duct tape. We've ported this supercharger and we also do have our thermal plates right here. So that keeps the heat transmission from the cylinder head to the blower and makes that blower a lot more efficient. Now, thirdly, another thing that we've done is that we have taken, this is actually a CTSV tank that we used to make for the Cadillac CTSV 2s and this holds about 1.8 gallons of coolant. Now this wasn't designed for this. If we can make a bigger, better tank, we can get a little bit more capacity. That would take a little bit longer to heat up and also being able to have a larger volume for cooling that supercharger. Now, another thing that we might even want to consider is possibly doing another heat exchanger here that is going to be larger and be able to shed even more heat yet. But We've actually heard the transmission in this thing before, and today we're gonna to put on a Mishimoto trans cooler, and that should be able to help drop our trans temps probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 degrees. All right, so guys, whether it's off-roading, drag racing, some really hard-spirited driving, it's been our experience that a cooler somewhere about this size should be able to drop you right in the neighborhood of about 20 degrees. Now this one right here, uh, we're looking at, what do you say, Laz? Probably maybe like a two-hour install or something like that. Shouldn't be. Yeah, the most times popping the front bumper off. Okay. It back on. But it's pretty darn straightforward. Basically, we're going to interrupt a line that is going, is it going to or from the trans cooler here? I believe that is going to. I need to double check that. Okay. But this and is nice. They have the factory fittings. Gotcha. So it's a quick connect on two of the fittings and a hose connect on four oh. splice into it. I love their penguin. All right. So this should be able to bolt in to any 2014 on up GM truck and be able to fit in there. Hopefully be able to knock you down somewhere around that 20 degree range. So you want to get this up in the Cadillac now and see how it looks? Yeah, let's get a little test fit there. All right, so ours is going to be a little bit more complex because we have our heat exchanger for our supercharger in the way there. We might need to move it around a little bit not totally sure yet. You see these little billet clamps that they have? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Just hold it right in there. It's so got a little bit of adjustability there. I think we're gonna look out for mounting areas. Yeah, so we put these uh, nut certs in there for the mounting of the heat exchanger for the supercharger, and that does not look like that's gonna inhibit 
for bolting this up, which is extremely fortunate. So it fits pretty good, huh? Yes, yes it does. So let's, let's see how this is gonna be here with this. Because it looks like we're not gonna have any sort of problem whatsoever. So got that there. Actually, it looks like that's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's crazy. They sent this here template, this little sticker, you put it on there right under that hole, shows you in the instructions, and then you just drill half inch, drill out those two holes. And that's basically going to tie all that together, and that's going to put that cooler in there. But uh, it's really not bad. I mean, like you said, most of the time it's going to be just off and on with the bumper, so no big deal whatsoever. All right, so Liza's going to finish up the install of the trans cooler. So we're going to use this highly complex CAD model, and that's a cardboard aided design, in order to make the largest expansion tank of what we can fit in here. All right, so our pump is siphoning from the bottom side of our expansion tank right there. We have a drain that goes down over there. So instead of having the width of what we had before, I think we can have more depth. I wonder if we can use like a Rule 2000 or something like that. Maybe If we have this kind of height, so it looks like we've got probably about 12 inches to work with. There's no reason we couldn't double what we have. try and get a dimension off of this all right so across we have about 11 and a half inches and you got about let's call that like seven and a quarter so we're going to use pretty much the battery tray right there and our height let's go from right here so from the high point actually we're going to go oh, let's go right there so and so we're not going to be coming up too darn high. We could probably go, I think 11 would be doable. All right, so let's calculate how much this is going to be in gallons. And let's we'll figure that out as for what we were at. So this is a 1.8 gallon tank and let's go to uh, see what this is going to gain us here. All right, so what we got with our dimensions here is that is 11 inches high, seven and a quarter inches wide, 11 inches long. That equals 897.18 inches cubed. One gallon is 231 inches. 897 inches cubed divided by 231 equals 3.88 gallons. So we would be gaining two gallons, which is a nice gain in volume right there. I most certainly think that that would help and we could also add a much larger capacity of ice. Now, one yeah, thing that we got to consider though is... The placement of the pump. Yes, exactly. So if we have the larger pump, the Rule 2000 pump, which will move a lot more volume of, of water, um, I think that that'll also help keep it a little bit cooler too. This right here is a Rule 2000. Now this one has seen some better days, uh, but this would go into the tank we kind of have it resting down there in the bottom, something like that. But if you can imagine, it's pretty much like one and a half times what the size of a battery would be since we're using the battery tray. We could probably make our inlet and outlet, our inlet here and our outlet down there, keep everything really nice and clean and keep our drain also on the bottom right there. Pretty darn simple. I'll draw that up and I think we can make that happen. You got Josh. All right, so upon our two minute sketch here, we have our inlet that we're gonna put right there. Our drain will still remain roughly about the same spot going out back in the bottom. Our mount and our pump will reside inside with our top, very much the same top right there. And of course our outlet is going to be on the bottom. I think that's a plan. Might have to run a larger top. The pump's gotta mm. fit through the top. Crap. Actually, let's look at that. Way could snake her in there. Maybe. 2650, 90 cents? You know, the, the thought had just crossed my mind here. However, that is a big price to, to spend, you know, and uh, this is your wife. <laughs> oh, this guy. Dang. Hey. Wow. Are you guys saying you're going to buy me a new blower? Wow. <coughs> Jeremy, I'm totally Jeez, Laz, I just got totally thrown under the bus totally right there. Down, make the boss happy. That's going to make yes. it's going to be a much more yes. expensive. Think about how much faster it would be. All right. We're ending this right now here. We're, yeah. we're out. All right. We're good. All right, so guys, we are going to bed our brakes. Now, this is a real pain in the butt procedure, and I've done this when I was road course racing my C6Z06. We've got to do 10 to 20 aggressive stops from 45 miles an hour down to five miles an hour. So I think I might have the perfect road. I'm gonna see if I can yank my wife out of the seat. Wait, what? 
Yeah. Proper break procedure. I'm it just says saying, it right here. go yeah. ahead and try, and uh, I'll get you back for it when you're sleeping. All right, so I was mentioning about the brake fade, and uh, a couple uh, stops ago, we were definitely starting to get some brake fade there. So, that's a really nice punch and smell. You don't like it? It smells like a bonfire where they're like burning couches or something in you know? it. I mean, it hasn't braked like that. I don't know if I should say okay. ever. All right, so the important thing about brake bedding, though, is the fact that we're impregnating the metal with the brake and we're getting metal in the brake pad. So you're kind of meshing the two and uh, in essence, it's supposed to make the brakes work a lot more effective. With Mishimoto Trans Cooler, uh, you would typically, like, I would say, see somewhere about maybe a 20 degree drop. Uh, unfortunately, I just reflashed that and that is off but uh right now we are uh we are probably about a 90 degree um probably about a 90 degree difference from ambient so we're doing pretty good i just did kind of some moderate pulls right there and it's doing very very well and again big big thing that i would want to hammer home is the fact that trans or heat in the trans is one of the biggest things that kills the trans so yeah it's you can actually see it going down pretty quick right now. So any trans builder will tell you that uh, heat is the biggest killer of a trans and running the trans cooler, there is no problem with that whatsoever. So definitely kudos to uh, the Mishimoto for that. I'm looking forward to getting you guys products all over our S10. Well, while we were out for a test drive with a porcupotamus, George whipped this up pretty fast before I could even say Fandango. But look at it, it's pretty darn good. So that's gonna be our drain. That will be the inlet coming off of the blower right there. This is two dimensions and I drew the lid. It's a nice lid, don't you think? So that should fit down in there quite nicely. We have a few things that we will have to move out of the way, possibly trim a little bit of that guy right there, but it is going to be a very nice snug fit. So we're gonna keep this. We'll be able to make this in house with the help of our buddy, Josh. Yeah, I've heard that before, but I just think it's like having sunshine blowing up your face. Guys, this is my good friend Dan. I've known him for a very long time. He's been a car junkie for a, a long while. 19 years. Long time. Wanted to take Dan for an experience of which we probably shouldn't do. No. Uh, we're probably doing something that we no. shouldn't do. There's not a probably, you not, should not do it. There's something that's not prepared to do it. So guys, we have our supercharged Escalade here. She makes about 675 wheel horsepower. If you guys haven't seen the last video that we did with the Porcupotamus, uh, that was versus Cletus and Cooper. Man, you are a natural. I'm making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are gonna take this thing on a road course and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a tight one, and this is a big girl, so we're going to have to expect her to stop on a dime. We're going to really... Oh, we got new brakes on it, too. So. Oh, that's great. Hey, Road yeah. Course is also road. very generous. It's, 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 a, it's, karting it's a karting track. It's a karting track. Fat Escalade, karting track. Okay, all right, let's do it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? We flip over. Uh, I don't know. I just farted. Oh, man. Jeez, we're definitely going windows down. <laughs> stop it. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You have the keys and he farted in here. <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. Nah, I'd we're just going to fling it around and hope we don't flip over. Flipping it would be discouraged. Yes, I definitely. It's looking frowned on by the missiles, yeah. for sure. Yeah. This is a really big girl. Wow. Yeah, it is. Should we play Queen Fat Bottom Girls while we're doing this? No, that's copyrighted. Oh, okay. Oh, big girl. Oh, <laughs> she is. Who's a big Who's a good girl? You are. It is tippy tippy. Start. <laughs> Breaking hard. All right, so we're going to carry more speed. I shouldn't eat so much. <laughs> it's, if it comes up, the window's open. This is the part that worries me. This is my neck. Oh, listen to the tires. No. No. 
What are you? Oh, sorry. That one, uh, we had a lap error. Oh, no, right, keep moving. Keep that moving. That was a good lap. I don't think it was. That he was good. I can't no, remember. No, hard to say. It's hard to say for Don't sure. argue with me. I just did. You messed up my concentration. Oh, yeah. I think this tire is going to be worn out unproportionately to the other tires. Yeah. Just saying. Sorry, honey. It's all for the good of the country. Oh, we got some little push. She's pushing. She's pushing. Come on. Right, hit it, hit it, hit it hard. Survey says we cool down lap. 3462 lap lap six was the best one. All right, 3462 is the best. So, so yeah, so you've actually gotten better with each each one almost. That's good. That's good. I got an idea. Why don't we try this with the go kart and just see what the difference is? I, I don't know. So guys, the Porkopotamus is a very powerful vehicle. Now it does have some new brakes and all that, and it is great, but the rolling weight and the power to weight is certainly not nearly as favorable as the next thing we, we want to show you. Some time back, I had done a little competition with Cletus on a figure eight with his 900 horsepower Crown Vic versus a go-kart, and that was actually Cletus's cart. And it was, uh, it was quite an eye-opener to see the differences between the two lap times. Now, this one right here is what I want to take on track. This right here is an old girl. Should be very similar in power-ish. This thing feels like about a 600, 650 wheel horsepower vehicle, but at about 3,000 pounds. So this thing has a Rotax 125cc motor. We just rebuilt this thing, and we'll probably show you guys a video of that at some point. But we ported the head, raised the compression, did a number of other things, but it still needs some TLC here and there. It's got some okay tires on it, but we should be able to rip her pretty good. It has the lowest center of gravity with the most amount of grip. The thing that's unusual about this chassis is the fact that it has front brakes, and that's normally reserved for something like a shifter. Now this is a two-speed shifter, and this thing feels like a 750-wheel GTR. It is nasty, it is super controlled, and it can make a novice driver drive like a pro. Pretty much elevates the skill level well beyond what the average person would be able to do just because the platform is so darn good. So this is a heavily modified motorcycle engine. Now the other two carts that we showed you before, those were specifically designed cart engines. This thing is one down, five up, and it has a neutral in between first and second, just like any other dirt bike. But again, you see the front brakes. This is a pretty brutal fast cart. This actually belongs to Cletus. I've been kind of taking care of it and beating the tar out of it. It's been a give and take relationship. I love this cart. It's like old faithful and it freaking rips. It feels like about a 750 wheel horsepower car on about a 3,200 pound chassis. But let's see what we can do on a cart like this. I have my guesses of what you think it'll be able to do. Put a guess out there at how much faster you think this might be. Guys, what I like about karting so much is that it is one of the highest intensity levels, and it's so inexpensive when you compare it to other forms of motorsports. Now, karting can still be very expensive, but if you're a parent, it's something that you can do with your kids as well. Karting sharpens your skills so much, and it's much more concentrated than even road course racing a, a high horsepower car. It is something that it's almost like four times faster than actually racing a road course car. Uh, it teaches you tremendous car control and it's, you get a great workout to boot. This wasn't my best piece of driving and I was sliding all over the place. If we could have put a better set of tires on there, we most certainly could get some better times out of this thing, but had a great time and uh, had to tweak a few things, but put a fresh tire on it, probably could have been about a second and a half, two seconds faster. The best one was 28.11. 28.11. All right, brother. 
getting like faster and faster and then that was your fastest one. So averaging about mid 28s. All right guys, that kind of surprised me a little bit. I know that I've run as fast as a 24 second lap on one of my buddy's carts over here. This cart over here, I've run a, probably about a 25 and a half second lap. And then the DD2 cart over here, that's a two speed shifter. Like I said, that'll make a novice driver really drive well. I didn't drive that great, but this thing I know I've done 24 second laps in around this track with that. This thing is not to be disappointing though. It is a fun, fun cart. I picked this thing up for a few hundred bucks. The Porcupotamus is a tremendous amount of fun and uh, it's just obviously not set out to do what we did with it. The Porcupotamus certainly is not set up for road course. She's a big girl and uh, we danced as best we could with that big pig. Go-kart is certainly more cut out for that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. We'll see you next episode. Get it. Beep, beep, come on.